Welcome to this next video in the playlist on Ring Theory. In this video, what we're going to do is discuss maximal ideals, which are special types of ideals of rings. Okay, right. Uh, so let's begin with the definition of a maximal ideal. Okay, so a maximal ideal of a ring, which will denote capital M here, okay, is going to first and foremost just be an ideal of the ring, capital R, okay, and it's going to be a proper ideal, okay, so it's not going to be equal to the unit ideal, it's not going to be equal to the entire ring, so I'll just write that down, so M must be a proper ideal here, i.e. not the unit ideal, it must be a proper subset of the ring, okay, in addition, it must be the case that it's maximal, okay, now what does that actually mean? It means that there is no other proper ideal uh, of the ring capital R that contains all of M. Okay, so what I mean by that is uh, there can't be another ideal um, which we'll call capital I, which is in between the two. Okay, so it can't be the case that you can find me an ideal capital I here, such that M is properly contained in I, and also I is properly contained in R. Okay, so I would also have to be a proper ideal, so both of them have to be proper ideals. Okay, and you cannot find such an ideal. Okay, so the only other ideal of the ring which can contain this maximal ideal, if it is indeed a maximal ideal, is the unit ideal, which is the entire ring. There is no proper ideal I, uh, such that M is completely contained in I, and I is then obviously completely contained in R, because it's a proper ideal. So it's maximal with respect to ideals. There is no ideal that is bigger than it, which is still a proper ideal. Okay? And that's the definition of a maximal ideal. Okay, so to get some intuition for this, let's have a look at some examples, and then we'll uh, have a look at why this concept of a maximal ideal is so important. Okay, so, examples then. Let's use the example of the ring of integers and have a look at uh, maximal and non-maximal ideals in the ring of integers. Okay, so the ring of integers, hopefully we're familiar with it now, it's the set of all whole numbers with the normal addition and multiplication laws on it that we learned in school. Okay, uh, now we know that all of the ideals of the ring of integers are of the form n times z, i.e. they're all integer multiples of some little n, where n is an integer that's greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so all the ideals are of this form, and the other way of writing this is it's the principal ideal generated by n. It's all integer multiples of this little n. So, for instance, the zero z, which would be uh, the zero ideal, there's one z, that would be uh, the uh, unit ideal, then there's two z, that would be all multiples of two, three uh, z, all the integer multiples of 3, etc. Okay, so let's start off with an example that is not a maximal ideal. Okay, so an example of an ideal that is not a maximal ideal would be 4z. Okay, now this is certainly an ideal of z. Okay, so it's all integer multiples of 4. All the multiples of 4. So, just to write this out explicitly, 4z would be the subset that contains 0. That's a multiple of 4. That's 0 times 4. 4 negative 4, 8, negative 8, and you'd go on and on and on and on. All the integer multiples are 4. Okay, now, that is an ideal, but it is not a maximal ideal, and the reason it's not a maximal ideal is that I can find you another ideal, which is still a proper ideal of the ring of integers, which contains all the 4z. And the way I can do this is look at this. 4z is completely contained, properly contained, within 2z, which is also properly contained within z. Okay, so 2z, this is another ideal, and this is all integer multiples of 2. So this will have 0, 2, negative 2, 4, negative 4, 6, negative 6, 8, negative 8. So because all of the integer multiples of 4 are also integer multiples of 2, they'll all be completely contained within 2z here. Okay, uh, so 4z is properly contained within 2z, and of course 2z contains things that 4z doesn't, such as 2 for instance. Okay, and 2z is completely contained in z, because of course it doesn't contain all of the integers, it doesn't contain 1 for instance. Okay, so 
I have found you another proper ideal uh, which completely contains 4z, okay, so properly contains 4z, and which itself is a proper ideal, so it's properly contained within the integers, and that therefore means that 4z is not maximal, okay, it's not the biggest ideal, you can get a bigger ideal, which is still a proper ideal, uh, that completely contains all of the elements that 4z doesn't, okay, so it's not the case that there's nothing in between 4z and z, okay, uh, there is. So 4z would not be a maximal ideal in the ring of integers. 2z, on the other hand, would be a maximal ideal within the ring of integers. There is no uh, bigger ideal within the ring of integers that uh, properly contains 2z and which is a proper ideal of the integers. The only ideal that is bigger than 2z is the unit ideal, and that's not a proper ideal. That's equal to the entire integers. Okay, so if you stick even if you even try to put in another element into this set 2z, uh, the way in order to maintain it an ideal, you end up having to make this into the entire integers. You have to make it the entire unit ideal. Okay, and therefore that's not a proper ideal. So 2z would therefore count as a maximal ideal. Okay, now I claim that actually all the maximal ideals within the integers are of the form pz, the principal ideal generated by p, where p is a prime number. Okay, so a number uh, that um, only is a multiple of one and itself. Okay, so I hope you uh, know what a prime number is from a classical arithmetic, uh, even though we haven't rigorously defined what it is in abstract ring theory yet. That will come up soon. Uh, but uh, you know what a prime number is in the integers from classical arithmetic. So look at the primes that are greater than or equal to zero. So you'll have things like two, three, five, seven, uh, eleven, um, 13, 17, etc. It goes on and on. Okay, so these are the prime numbers, and if you consider the principal ideals generated by these prime numbers, I claim that those are going to be maximum ideals within the uh, ring of integers. Now, why is that going to be the case? Well, uh, in order to prove that they're maximum ideals, what we need to prove is that there's no ideal that properly contains them, which is itself properly contained within the ring of integers. The next biggest ideal, the only ideal that's bigger than them that contains them, uh, is the unit ideal. Okay, and of course that's not a proper ideal, so that doesn't count. Okay, now why is that going to be the case? Well, we know that all ideals within the ring of integers are of the form n times z. Okay, now if it was the case that I could find you some proper ideal here, n times z, that completely contain p times z, what would that have to mean? That would have to mean that all of these multiples, all of these integer multiples of p, had to be contained within n times z. Okay, in particular, p would have to be contained within here. Okay, so p would now have to be an element of n times z. But all of the things in here are just integer multiples of n. So that would mean that n times z for some z would have to equal p. Okay, and I'll just add the for some uh, z, little z is an element of the integers, capital Z here. Okay, so if it was the case that pz was completely contained within an ideal, which we know is of the form n times z, it would have to be the case that I could find you some z here, such that when I multiply it with n, I get p. But I know that there are only two possibilities here. There's only two things that I can multiply together to give p, and that's 1 and p. Okay, uh, so if... Um, if n is equal to 1, of course, so basically what I can conclude from that is that n has to either equal 1 or n is equal to p, but that's rubbish, because if n is equal to 1, then this is the unit ideal, okay, no good at all, uh, and if n is equal to p, then this is exactly the same as this, so this isn't properly contained within this, we haven't got a bigger ideal, okay, so... If you look at these uh, principal ideals generated by primes in the integers, uh, those are all going to be maximal ideals within the ring of integers. Okay, so there's a little bit of an example of maximal ideals, uh, a bit of an example of working with maximal ideals and finding them and seeing things that aren't maximal ideals. Okay, so now comes the question, why do we care? Okay, and the reason we care about maximum ideals is that if you consider constructing the quotient ring 
of the ring capital R by a maximal ideal. So if you quotient a ring out by an ideal which is maximal within it, I claim that what you end up with here, this quotient ring that you construct, I claim that this will always be a field. Okay, so if you quotient out by a maximal ideal, the quotient ring that you end up creating here is not just going to be any old ring, it's going to be a field. Okay, uh, and we will prove that in the next video.